The next challenge within the sheet metal features is this one in the bottom right hand corner. So as you can see here, we've created the sheet metal part. And what we're going to learn about this time is how to unfold, say, a flange and add some details onto that and then fold that back in. And that's what I've used for this sort of internal part of the design to create these slots. OK, and this is a really good technique to learn OK, when you're creating more complex parts within sheet metal. So in Fusion, this is what the sheet metal part looks like. So as you can see here, we've created um, a base flange, as we've learned about in the first uh, part of the tutorial. We've then created some flanges that come up, and then we've extended those to come out at an angle. And then what I've done is, as you'll see when we go through this, is then I've flattened one part of this, Okay, and created these slots. And then the last thing I've done is also created this particular sort of like a tab or something like that you might want to call it. And then I've duplicated this around my design. So if we go back to the beginning so we can see what we've got. And I'm going to turn on this sketch here and just go into this and look at the dimension. So it's, we've got a square that's 50 by 50. So that's easy to do to start with. So if we go up to here, and click sketch. I'm going to use a center rectangle so all my planes and my axes are all in the middle. And I'm going to type in 50 by 50, use a tab to go between the two and click enter. I'm then going to go up to sheet metal. I'm going to create a flange and I'm going to select that there. I'm just going to keep one sided so that means that my flange is above my sketch. It's going to be a new body and I'm just going to go for the default steel and click OK. So that's the first bit done, that's nice and easy. And that's what I've done there. So the next thing I've done is I've then selected these edges, and if we have a look. So I've selected the edges, I've dragged those out. Okay, I've created what's called a full edge so that takes the full edge of that and creates a flange, and it's 30 millimeters by 65 degrees. Okay, so if we go back to here and we go up to flange. I'm going to select these edges. I'm going to hold control down. I'm going to drag this up 30 millimeters. Type that in there. Okay, up here. I'm going to go for, okay, I'm sure it's 65 degrees. Okay, and click OK. So we're just going to go back and check that. Okay, so we've got 30 by 65. The It's measured the height from the inside face. Okay, and we're going to go on the outside. First of all, we've created this design here. So it was quite complicated, but it was relatively easy. Just drag it out and change the angle and height, and we've created that shape. So bring this forward. What I've done now is from there, I've selected the edge and I've gone, okay, 20 millimeters out and I've gone 65 degrees. Okay, to create a new flange. I'm going to select each one of these again. So I'm going to select the inner one, like so. I'm going to drag that out. We're going to flip the direction. Again, let's see if we have a look. Okay, that's not quite the angle we want. So if we go 65, okay, it would give us the angle that we want. And here we're going to type in the dimension. So I'm going to type in, so just to show you, well, okay, gone a bit wrong now, haven't I? Because if you have a look in that one there, okay, it's going to be 20 millimeters. So again, if you go wrong, it's going to be too big, or you, you've created a design, you think, actually, I need to change it. I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to change that, 20 mil. Done. All right, so that's quite straightforward. We've got up to this bit now. I'm just going to turn our sketch off. Okay, so we've got this sort of uh, design here. That's what we've got up to now. What we're going to do next, if I drag that forward, is I'm going to use the unfold, and I'm going to unfold this part of the design. So the unfold, if we go to modify, you can see unfold. So stationary. So what we're going to do is click that. That's what our stationary face. We want to get to keep still. And it's highlighted the bends. And I'm going to select on this bend here to unbend it there. And I'm also going to select this one here to unbend it. 
Okay, I don't need to go all the way around. I'm just going to do that. I'm going to bend that on there. And that's what I've created here, as you can see. So I've unfolded that now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch like this. So if we have a look at this sketch and look at the dimensions. So we've got a slot, okay, which is, all right, and you don't need to worry too much about these dimensions, but if we have a look, so we've got a slot that's 100, okay, from that edge. And what height is that there? 11, okay. So I'll tell you what, if I change that to 10, actually, it'll just make it easier. So it's 10 from that edge there to that point and 10 to there. Okay. And we've got, okay, two either side, this center one. All right. So if we go up to here, I like normal for kit sketch, and sketch on the surface. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up to slot. And there's lots of different slots. Again, if you have a look at, say, this one here, we could click once, click again, and that drags it out. And I could dimension it. All right, that's one way of doing it. And then you've also got slightly different ways of creating slots, okay? You've got curved ones. And if we go for this overall slot and drag, okay, that creates an overall size as well. So if we just delete those, I'll go and do. What I want to do actually is create a reference. I'm going to use a line, alpha line. And I'm going to right click on that and go to construction. I'm going to use that as just a reference point. And if we go back to here, we're going to recreate this now. Okay. So go up to slot. I'm going to create a slot on there and drag that out. I'm going to dimension this. So I'm going to go from here. I just need to make sure. I want to match it up, go from the second part of the fold. So I'm going to put D dimension from there to that. I'm going to go dimension. Okay, let's have a look again from that line. Okay, down 10 millimeters as well. So from that point to there, 10 millimeters. That gives me my design. So once I've uh, created that slot, what we're going to do now is create a pattern either side. So we're going to go up to create. I'm going to go up to rectangular pattern. So the object I want to pattern is this. Direction. Okay. It already knows the direction. I could if I wanted to select an edge or something, but it's okay with the direction for now. And what I want to do is I want to do symmetric. So it's going to do the same either side. So it's going to produce same either side. And we want, okay, that was that. Spacing wise, okay, 20 millimeter spacing. And we've got two either side of that central one. I'm going to click OK. What we're going to do now is go to solid and do an extrude cut. I'm going to select these, so I can do that or I can drag a box around it. And I'm going to make sure that cuts through. So just drag that down. I could type in the exact dimension. I could go cut. Okay, like so. So I'm not uh, adding material. What I want to do is remove it. Click OK. And what I've got now is these slots. So if we come back to this design, As you see, that's what I've done. I've created those holes in there. Next thing to do is to fold that back. All right, so basically I unfolded it and now I want to return it to its original shape. So under sheet metal, you see there's an option here and I can click refold. And like magic, that refolds. So rather than uh, going along here and creating that sketch again on all of these three sort of features, what I'm going to do, as you can see what it did here, is create a pattern. So I can actually pattern that now. 
And Fusion is quite clever because it will recognize what I want to do and it will pattern it around here. So what I don't need to do is unflatten okay, all of these and pattern it. I can just pattern it in this design here. So I'm going to go to Create again and just make sure that you're in the solid. And I'm going to go down to Pattern, Circular Pattern. What we're going to pattern is the feature. So we're going to select the feature we want to pattern. The axis is this green one here. And it's at the moment it's saying three. What we want to do is change up to four. So it's going to be four in total as we go around there like that. And I'm going to click OK. Now you might think, whoa, it hasn't done anything. Why is that not done anything? Because what we've done here, if we go to this option, we've used the option of optimized. Okay, and you'll see that if I go edit there, I didn't have that option selected. So if I now go into optimized and click OK, it actually creates that feature all the way around. So sometimes you may need to just change one of those two options at the bottom, okay, to create that pattern. If we go back, see what I've done next. So I've selected that edge and I've created a symmetric flange and distance, okay, is five millimeters. So what that is doing is it's basically pulling that five millimeters either side from the center and the height is 15 and 90. So if you remember that, so five millimeters and 15, come over to here, go back into sheet metal, flange that edge okay type in 15 type in 5 okay or if you think about it I've got those wrong like that so just be careful with these here in terms of distances so what I've done there is I've created this sort of a little tab I suppose you can call it so it's 15 in height. Again, if I want to change the height, I can. By just dragging it or typing in, and I can change the angle as well. But we want it 90 degrees. And we want it 15. Oops, not 215. 15 in height on that. And click OK. Again, what I could do is I could click on this edge and create that flange again, this edge, and then this edge. But we're going to use, again, OK, we're going to use uh, the circular pattern. But before that, I'm going to create a sketch on that surface. And if we go into this sketch, okay, I've created a five millimeter hole. And then I've cut it through using an extrude again, and then I've patterned it like so. So we're going to do that. So I'm going to click that face. I'm going to click on the circle. I'm going to type five millimeters and I'm just going to draw a line actually from that bit to there and that bit. So corner to corner, so that allows me to find the center quite easily. And you see it comes up with a triangle, click on that. So I'm going to go E for extrude, rotate that. I could type in my dimension, I can drag it, okay, or I can even click up to a point. So there's different ways of doing it. Type it in, click to a point. Okay, or drag it. I've got a hole now. I'm going to go up here. And again, we're going to go up to pattern, circle pattern, features. So we're going to make sure we correct, select the correct features. So we want to pattern the flange and we want to pattern the extrude. But say if I just miss this out, I'm going to show you what happens if I miss it out. So I'm going to go axis, green one again, and I want four in total. And click that. Now you see it hasn't so copied or patterned that hole around, and that's because I missed it off. So if I click on uh, edit on that feature and objects here, okay, I'm going to go down to here and I'm going to select that extrude. And it gives me a slight preview. If you zoomed in, it gives you a preview. You've also got the option, it's because I patterned it around here four times. And I've got a 90 degree angle between each one. For whatever reason, if I decided later on to get rid of that one, you could just untick it. Okay? But I've got four in total, separated by 90 degrees each one, and click OK.
and there you go you've got that design and if we go back to this one okay all right we've got a nice simple in a way but um if you look at the geometry okay it's quite uh, looks like a quite complex design thanks for watching and if you found this content helpful please click like and subscribe and also check out any other resources and videos created using the links in the description i'll see you on the next one